The 2021 F1 grid is shaping up and will look somewhat different next year as multiple new drivers and driver switches have been confirmed up to this point. Sergio Perez is perhaps the most notable driver with no solid options going into 2021. So how do we get here and why do I think he deserves the seat at Red Bull? My name's Andy and this is Behind the Drive. Sergio Perez's history. Sergio Perez has been a Formula 1 driver since 2011 after joining Sauber. He made an instant impression in his first race, finishing 7th in Australia. The Mexican driver was the only driver in the field to make the one-stop strategy work. But sadly, this result would be taken away from Perez though, as both Sauber drivers would be later disqualified from the race due to an illegal rear wing. But despite this initial setback, this talent of looking after the tyres has become synonymous with Perez as he's known as a driver that can make tyres perform well and last longer than the other drivers around him, meaning he often ends up outperforming his machinery. The rookie ended up achieving 5 points finishes with 14 points across the season. Perez stayed with Sauber for 2012 and had a much stronger year, achieving his first podium finish at the second round in Malaysia, with a second place finish having battled Fernando Alonso for the win in the closing stages. He went on to achieve another two podiums in Canada and Italy later in the year and ended up finishing 10th in the championship with 66 points, a pretty impressive achievement which gave him the opportunity to move to a front-running team in McLaren to replace the outgoing Lewis Hamilton. Tough shoes to fill. It was this opportunity with McLaren in 2013 that the perceptions of Perez changed. Early on in the season, at round four in Bahrain, Perez was criticised by many, including his teammate Jensen Button, for being too aggressive on track. Button was quoted as saying, I've raced with many teammates over the years and with quite an aggressive teammate in Lewis, but I'm not used to driving down the straight and then my teammate coming along and wiggling his wheels at me and banging wheels with me at 300 kilometers an hour. Then adding, that's something you do in karting and normally you grow out of it, but that's obviously not the case with Checo. This summarises the perspective of many, with Kimi Raikkonen saying that Perez should be punched in the face after Perez collided with the Finnish driver in Monaco. Perez ended up a disappointing 2013 season trophyless and without a seat at McLaren as he was dropped by the team to be replaced by Kevin Magnussen. In late 2013, it was announced that Perez had signed for Force India for the 2014 season, as the 24-year-old was given a lifeline with the midfield team. And similar to his Sauber days, he made a good impression early on, achieving a podium finish in Bahrain, the team's first since 2009. He ended up with 12 points finishes from 19 races, but despite this solid result, he ended up 37 points behind his teammate Nico Hülkenberg. Towards the end of the year, Perez signed a two-year contract extension with the Silverstone-based team, his first multi-year deal that would see him staying with the team until 2016. 2015 was a big year for Perez, as for the first time he would have a home Grand Prix, with the Mexican race returning to the calendar for the first time since 1992. The season went well for Sergio as he beat his teammate Hülkenberg by 20 points and achieved another podium for the midfield team, achieving a third place in Russia. This is where Perez's reputation for getting the absolute maximum out of the tyres and the car was getting noticed more widely. This time with Perez pitting early under a safety car and then defending from faster cars behind him to hang on for third position come the chequered flag in Sochi. In 2016, Perez built on this strong showing and achieved two podiums in Monaco and the European Grand Prix in Azerbaijan. The now 26 year old was really delivering for Force India and was losing his reputation for being a dangerous driver, replacing it for one that could extract the maximum from the car and deliver for the midfield team. But this, as it turned out, was a bit of a double-edged sword, as he gained a reputation for being able to deliver for a midfield team, but not a front-running team, after his challenging year at McLaren. Perez had built this reputation, and despite being very closely matched with Hülkenberg, the Mexican driver's ability to achieve so many podium finishes in midfield cars really bolstered his value to the team. This meant that going into 2017, the team would once again continue the driver's contract, while dropping Hülkenberg. The 2017 season was new for a few reasons. Number one, the team's primary sponsor changed to BWT, a water company which changed the primary livery colour to pink. In addition, Hülkenberg had been replaced by Mercedes' young driver Esteban Ocon, 
who was highly rated within the F1 community. In this year, Perez finished best of the rest in the championship in 7th position behind the drivers racing for Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull. He didn't convert any podiums, but was consistent through the season in a strong year for the newly nicknamed Pink Panthers. It was a dicey year though, as the two Force India drivers were closely matched, with just 13 points between them by the end of the year. The car was solidly the fourth best in the field, meaning they were frequently fighting each other on track. This happened in Canada, where the more experienced driver in Perez refused to let Ocon through as he thought he could fight for a podium, and there were even more tensions when the pair clashed in Baku at a safety car restart, ending Perez's race and sending Ocon to the back of the pack. In 2018, the pair were retained at Force India, but the battles continued as the pair continued to be closely matched. The car was less competitive and the team were on the verge of collapse, which eventually did occur during the season after Perez took legal action against the team after he had not been paid. Although this move sounds like a poor act from the driver, after the action, the team went into administration, potentially saving hundreds of jobs within the team. The outfit was then bought by a consortium led by Lawrence Stroll, and as it turns out, this was the beginning of the end for Sergio at the team that he'd spent the majority of his F1 career at. Through the 2018 season, Perez was the only non-Mercedes, Ferrari or Red Bull driver to achieve a podium finish, doing so in Azerbaijan, which was another highlight for the Mexican driver. But Perez ended up a few points behind Nico Hülkenberg in the championship in 8th position, a solid return given the turmoil in the team that year. For 2019, the Mexican driver had a new teammate once again in Lance Stroll, and the team had a new name, Racing Point. The team described the 2019 season as being a transitional one, as the team failed to invest heavily in the car due to the administration challenges the year before. Despite this challenging start, they developed the car well through the year as the team has become well known for with 8 points finishes for Perez in the second half of the year compared to just 3 in the first half. He ended the season with over double the points of the young Canadian driver. While 2019 was a transitional year, 2020 was the year that the Racing Point team did something different. Being nicknamed the Tracing Point car, the machine was almost identical to the 2019 Mercedes Championship winning car. This frustrated teams up and down the grid, as through the early part of the season multiple teams lodged protests against the car, eventually being found guilty of copying the Mercedes rear brake ducts and being fined €400,000 and docked 15 constructors points. Despite the shortened 17 race season, and the Mexican driver missing two of these races due to testing positive for COVID-19, Perez has had his best season to date scoring 125 points prior to the final round in Abu Dhabi. With the Racing Point driver sitting fourth in the Drivers' Championship, he's also achieved two podium finishes, including his first ever race win after 190 race starts. And despite all of this, Perez is out of a seat for 2021, after the team decided to terminate his contract to replace him with the outgoing Ferrari driver and four-time world champion, Sebastian Vettel. The Perez shaped 2021 seat. Perez has lost his F1 seat as a result of a theme that's becoming increasingly common on the F1 grid, with a parent or sponsor of a driver, in this case Lance Stroll, having enough control of a team to ensure that they have a seat on the grid. This theme is continued with new drivers such as Nikita Mazepin being confirmed at Haas next season, despite the Russian driver not being the most talented option available to the American team. And it's this change that's resulted in Sergio Perez being left without a 2021 F1 seat, despite achieving his first race win and having his best season to date with Racing Point. The grid is not yet finalised, with there being seats available at Mercedes, Red Bull and Alfa Tauri that are yet to be confirmed. However, the Mercedes seat is all but confirmed for Hamilton, and the Alfa Tauri seat will be reserved for a young Red Bull driver, most likely Yuki Tsunoda. So that leaves the Mexican driver fighting for one of the most competitive seats on the grid at the moment, in Red Bull. A car that, for two years now, has ended up significantly behind the young talent of Max Verstappen. For me, the situation at Red Bull has reached boiling point. The past two years of failures in the second seat has gone too far. If anything, this has gone a long way to prove how well Daniel Ricciardo was doing in that seat up to 2018 before he left the team. 
Pierre Gasly was disappointing in the first half of the 2019 season, but has since proven himself at AlphaTauri, outperforming the car and even winning the race in Monza this season. Alex Albon has shown moments of potential across his year and a half in the car, but has been off the pace, often ending up behind the likes of Sergio Perez, Daniel Ricciardo and the McLaren drivers behind them. So for me, if Red Bull really want to be competitive in the Constructors' Championship and give Max Verstappen the best chance to take the challenge to the Mercedes ahead of them for 2021 and beyond, they must remove Alex Albon at the team and replace him with a proven driver that's more likely to be able to be there to take advantage of the competitive car that Red Bull has. But Red Bull have always been a team that promotes from within and has never taken an external driver since the Red Bull Young Driver Academy was set up. And you can see why. They produce some of the most talented drivers on the grid in Formula 1, in Vettel, Ricardo, Sainz and Verstappen, and some of the best drivers outside of Formula 1 with the likes of Sebastian Buemi and Jean-Éric Verne. But for me, they've been caught out with Ricardo making the move away from the team, as they ended up promoting drivers way too soon and releasing Carlos Sainz to McLaren. In addition, based on the latest reports, Max Verstappen has a say in, in who his teammate will be, which I think is quite frankly ridiculous. A driver should not have a say on the matter, and it should be purely up to the team to ensure they have a driver lineup that will deliver them the best results. So will the move happen? So, the crux of this video is whether Red Bull will take the proven race winner in Sergio Perez, who's known to extract the most out of any car he's given, or whether they stick with the young gun in Alex Albon. And if the decision was up to me, I think I'd take Perez. It's time for Red Bull to admit that they promoted Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon too soon in their careers and really to take advantage of the opportunities that they have in the next few seasons to compete with Mercedes ahead of them, they need somebody with a bit more experience. But will it happen? Sadly I think it won't. Red Bull have been putting off the decision for so long and I think they'll keep Albon and will say that he's shown signs of improvement and is ready to take on the challenge for 2021. It'll be a real shame if this does happen, and I would love to be proven wrong by Christian Horner and Helmut Marko, but I just don't see Red Bull breaking from their model of promoting from within. And I think if they keep Albon, it'll be a mistake, as the Red Bull car has been developing well and getting closer to the Mercedes car ahead of them, particularly in the hands of Max Verstappen. And by bringing in somebody with more experience, they really give themselves the best shot of taking the challenge to them next year. So there you have it. That's my view on the Perez-shaped hole at Red Bull for 2021. But do you agree, should Perez be the driver in that seat next year? Should it be somebody else entirely? Let me know in the comments. And if you've watched this far, then please like and subscribe for more F1 opinion videos like this one in the future.